Coming up on today's Classic Car Garage, we're going to be doing a little painting. Then we'll be color sanding that new paint we applied, and then we're going to show you how to buff it out to a jewel-like shine. Jim Richardson stops by with his resto tip on inspecting your Classics gearbox, and we'll have Viewer's Car of the Week. All that and more just ahead on today's Classic Car Garage. Hey, welcome to Classic Car Garage, the original Classic Car Resto TV show. You know, back in the 20s, when a painter painted a car, often he mixed his own paint. He would take a little tree pitch, maybe some tar thin with benzene, throw in a pinch of lamp black, maybe a, a, another cup full of this or that. He'd mix it all up, and he would apply that with a paintbrush. Well, those days are long past. Today's modern paint systems are truly much more complicated to mix up and a lot more complex to apply in order to get a show winning paint job. Well on today's show we're going to take a little mystery out of that process for you. Tom and I are going to mix up some paint, some torch red that is, for our project 56 Chevy sedan delivery and we're going to show you how to apply that. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great Jeff. Good to see you Good again. Good seeing you. Well we're here in Tom's paint mixing room where we're about to mix the paint that's going to go in our project car. Now Tom, mixing paint today is really not what it used to be, right? It's no, not at all. It's really a complicated actual system, right? Yes, it is. Tell us about all the cans that you've got over here. These are actually individual cans of toner, right? That's right. This is called a mixing bench, and what it does is mix the paint. It stirs them up all mm -hmm. automatically so the uh, toners don't separate, and so it keeps them agitated all the time. So these are all the different elements that go into most of the paints that you these, would need to mix. These toners will make all paints. All paints. All colors of all cars. Now our uh, Project 56 is going to get a, a coat of torch red paint. It's the same paint that was on a modern Corvette. How do you go about finding out what elements over there go into torch red paint? Well, this is called the microfish from Spieshecker, and this is every manufacturer of every automobile. <laughs> I can that's see. That's made now. Citroen even. <laughs> I mean, this is every car. Every car. And there's, there's two sides to this, so there's you know a whole bunch of these. And then we put them into the viewer, and as you can see, we've got Torch Red up on the screen here. These here, the MB numbers, represent the toner, all of these toners right here. Mm -hmm. We've got three different toners in here, and then we've got the different measurements. The P1, which would be one pint, one Q, one quart, two Q, two quarts, one G, one gallon. And then you go down, and there's three different toners with uh, three different measurements. Okay, so we know that 422.7 grams goes uh, into this paint insofar as toner number 544. How do you measure something out that accurately? Well, this is called a gram scale, and this is a really, really accurate measuring device. Okay, so now that you have uh, basically mixed up all these three elements that goes into torch red, and again, you're going to mix it by putting it into a mixing cup, right? That's right. We would, we would take a mixing cup like this, and then we would pour the different toners into this, and, and now we've, uh, we've already mixed up the paint. We've got a gallon of color over here, and then we're going to reduce this out. Okay, so you pour the different toners in here, stir it up, mm -hmm. then you get ready for the reducer. That's right. And the reducer is mixed at what ratio? Two to one. We Two parts of paint to one part of reducer. And basically that's just going to thin this out so it's going to flow through the gun better, that's right? That's right. Okay, so uh, if you go ahead and mix the reducer All in right. there, we'll get set to uh, paint. This is a mixing stick that Spieshecker supplies with the system on 4 to 1 uh, on that side and 2 to 1 on this side. On this particular, uh, you know, on base coat that we're going to use here, this is a side that mixes up the uh, base coat, and then the one right in between there is where we're going to take the reducer to. So if we took two parts of base coat up to the two, and then we put in up to that two, that would give us the exact two to one measurement. So you'd stick this into a square container, you'd make sure the sides are square on that, Right. and then we're going to pour off two parts of the actual color that is in here, and I'll do that right now. So we pour two parts of color. You can see that color, isn't it beautiful? Well, that's going to look great on the car. 
So we're watching it come okay. up to that level on the stick. That's right. And we can pull out the stick so you can see the... We've come up to the two with the color. Right. And now we're going to come up to this two with the reducer. reducer. So we take our reducer. Now, if you didn't use reducer in the paint, what would happen? It's not going to come out of the gun. <laughs> it's going to be too thick, right? Yep. Now, ultimately, this is going to make a little more paint then, right? Yes. Okay. Now you can pull the stick out of there, and, and you can and see we, we've come up to the other two. And that's, that's basically reduced, uh, reduced paint. So there's no need to uh, do any more to that. Okay, well, Tom, I'll tell you what, I'll let you mix that up, get it ready to pour into the gun. And when we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we're going to head next door to the paint booth and begin spraying color. Stay with us. There's more to come.